एस चांद प्रेजेंस एजुकेशनल वीडियो लेक्चर्स एज पर दी ए आई सी टी ई कारिकुलम डिफिकल्ट कॉन्सेप्ट मेड इजी स्टडी एनी वेयर एनी टाइम I am going to discuss some of the periodic properties of elements with you. Hello everyone, welcome to S Chand Academy. Myself, Dr. Garima Gaba, and if you want to read more about this topic, then you can refer to the book by S Chand Publishing. The link of the e-book is given in the description box below. Okay, in today's video, we will be discussing four topics about periodic properties, effective nuclear charge. penetration of orbitals variation of s p d and f orbital energies of atoms in the periodic table and last topic is electronic configuration so we have divide this topic in two parts in the first part we will be discussing the upper two topics effective nuclear charge and penetration of orbitals and in the second part we will be discussing the next two variation of s p d and f orbital energies and the last one electronic configuration so let's start the first part Okay so the first part is effective nuclear charge effective nuclear charge is the charge that each electron experiences so when we are teaching in a class when a teacher is teaching in the class the students who are sitting on the front seats they are able to see able to uh, listen to the teacher loudly they are able to listen clearly but the the students who are sitting at the back they are not able to listen properly the reason is the students who are sitting in the front are uh near to the teacher and so they are able to listen properly but those at the back the distance is greater so they are not able to listen properly same is the case with effective nuclear charge nucleus is having positive charge because it is having proton and neutron neutron are neutral species protons are positive species and the electrons are situated in the orbitals so the orbitals which are at the a uh, dist farther distance apart from the nucleus they are not able to have the proper effective nuclear charge from the nucleus and those electrons which are near to the nucleus they can experience the nuclear charge in a proper way like for example this is our nucleus which is having protons so it is positively charged species these are some of the electrons which are known as core electrons because it is near to the nucleus and the outer electrons are known as our valence electron so these valence electrons are not able to feel the nuclear charge properly because of the presence of these core electrons these are core electrons so the stronger the pull on the outermost electron towards the nucleus the higher the effective nuclear charge so when the, the distance between from electrons and the nucleus increases the effective nuclear charge decreases and because it occurs because of the presence of core electrons what uh, th this is a phenomena which is known as shielding effect it's defined as a phenomenon that occurs when valence electrons are blocked from feeling the strong pull of the nucleus by the innermost electron so these innermost electron they block the way so that the effective nuclear charge cannot reach till the valence electron this procedure is known as shielding effect or screening effect so let's move ahead and see how effective nuclear charge can be calculated it can be calculated using this formula which is known as z effective is equals to z minus s z effective is the effective nuclear charge which we are talking about right now z is your atomic number and s is your number of shielding electron so when you know atomic number and when you know the number of shielding electron in that case you can simply put the value in this formula and you can find the value of effective nuclear charge shielding electrons are core electrons or any electrons in an atom that are non valence jo bahar electrons nahi honge core electrons are known as shielding electrons these electrons create a shield on the valence electron blocking them from feeling the strong nuclear charge so they block the uh, the effective nuclear charge of the nucleus and the valence electrons are not able to feel that particular effective nuclear charge the more shielding electrons there are the lower the effective nuclear charge so we have to put the value of shielding electrons over here so when this uh, electrons number of shielding electrons are more then effective nuclear charge by default it becomes less let's see some of the examples so we'll consider some isoelectronic species fluorine ion neutral neon and sodium cation so this is these are the three species these are isoelectronic species 
what are isoelectronic species where number of electrons are same so all these species are having 10 electrons fluorine negative or anion then neon and sodium positive cation so all these uh, all these species are having 10 electrons each but over here the shielding electrons are 2 because it how it's calculated total electron minus valence electron total electrons are 10 and 8 valence electron are there so number of screening electrons or non valence electrons are 2 in each of the case but what differ over here is z z is what your effective your atomic number so effective nuclear charge is calculated as atomic number minus number of shielding electron so when your s is same but z is different so uh, the effective nuclear charge has to be different so what is the atomic number of fluorine 9 neon is 10 and sodium is 11 so when we put these values over here we get the effective nuclear charge of all these three species so effective nuclear charge of fluoride and ion is 7 of neon neutral atom is 8 sodium cation plus pc is 9 that means out of all these three species isoelectronic species the effective nuclear charge of sodium cation is the highest effective nuclear charge uh, is the most important property which will define what would be the atomic radius so because it of effective nuclear charge of sodium cation is high that means the valence electron will feel that effective nuclear charge and then will will electron proton will attract those electron so when those electron come near to the nucleus so the radius will decrease these are positive species electrons will get attracted towards it and the size in uh, in that property will decrease so smallest radius of these species is sodium cation right so you can calculate effective nuclear charge using the, this formula and over there you can define other properties as well okay so next part is penetration of orbitals so what is penetration how close uh, can someone gets to some other uh, moiety for example, penetration describes the proximity to which an electron can approach to the nucleus. As I told you, nucleus is having protons, so they are positively charged species. Electrons is negatively charged species, so that will attract each other. So electrons are bound to attract each other, but there is a limitation which electron is coming in which orbital. So whether they are coming in s orbital, p orbital, d orbital, f orbital, depending on that, depending on the radius of these orbitals, which shell it is coming in, that defines what would be the penetration of these orbitals. So multi-electron system, electron penetration is defined by an electron relative electron density near the nucleus of an atom. Electrons in different orbitals have different wave function and therefore different radial distribution functions and probability. So as I told you whether that electron is coming in s orbital, p orbital, d orbital, f orbital, there are four types of orbital available with us s, p, d, f. The shapes are different, the uh, energies are different. So depending on which electron is coming in which orbital, that would define what how uh, close the electrons can come to the nucleus. In other words, penetration depends on the shell and subshell. Now penetration depends on the shell and subshell. That means whether it is coming in which shell, it is 1s, 2s or it is coming in 2p, 3p, which shell and which subshell your electrons is coming in, that will define the penetration of orbital. We see that since a 2s electron has more electron density near the nucleus than a 2p electron, it is penetrating the nucleus of the atom more than 2p. Now you know the shapes also, 2s is your spherically charged or it is paired in nature and p orbitals are dumbbell shaped. So this is our s or this is our s orbital and this is our p orbital. So because it is having more electron charge density near the nucleus as compared to your p orbital, so more electrons are coming over here to near the nucleus. So this the penetration of s orbital would always be larger than that of p orbital. So that's what it is written. It is penetrating the nucleus of the atom more than that of 2p electron. So when your electron is coming in 2s orbital, the penetration would be more as compared to your 2p orbitals. The penetration power of an electron in a multi-electron atom is dependent on the values of both shell and subshell. So when you are calculating the penetration, you have to know whether the electron is coming in which shell and which sub subshell. Either of this will not be able to make a difference. You have to calculate both the points, which shell and which subshell. Let's move ahead.
Okay, within the same shell value, the penetrating power of an electron follows this trend in the subshell. So, as I told you, S orbital is sphere in shape, P is dumbbell shaped, D is double dumbbell shaped and so on. So, this is having more electron density near the nucleus as compared to P and as compared to D. So, penetration of orbital when it is coming in S orbital is greater as compared to when it is coming in P orbital and as compared to when it is coming in D and F. The shape of F orbital we will discuss in the next slides because it is more complicated. And for different values of shell, now we have seen about the different values of shell. If number of uh, shell is same and subshells are different, penetration power of an electron follows this trend. This is the trend like if it, the electrons are coming on 1s orbital, the penetration power would be more, penetration of orbital would be more as compared to 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p like that. So, this is the order. So, if you remember this order, then it would be easy for you to calculate the penetration of orbital. For example, you know one electron is in 3s orbital and the one is in 4s orbital. So, you know by default that 3s would be having more penetration as compared to 4s or as compared to the lower orbitals in the series. And the energies are different, energies are opposite. As you see 1s is having the most penetration of orbital. So, basically the energy of 1s is less. It is the opposite trends that we will see in the next part also. Penetration of orbitals we have discussed in general. In the next second part we will be discussing about the variation of s, p, d and f orbital. So, we will be looking at the shapes and we will see how this value has come. Because, because over here you have just seen the order. Now, when you remember the order, it would be easy for you to calculate the penetration of orbital. But uh, if you do not remember this order, then how will we be able to calculate the penetration of orbital? So, you have to know how this order has come. For that, there is a, a rule which is known as Madeleine rule that we will be discussing in the second part. So, for the first part, we will be discussing till here only. In the second part, we will be discussing two most important topics, variation of S, P, D and F orbital energies in different orbitals in different periodic uh, table and the second part is your electronic configuration. So, I will see you in the second part and if you want to read more about this topic, then you can refer to the book by S. Chan Publishing. The link of the ebook is given in the description box below. Please like, share and subscribe to these videos. Thank you so much. All rights resolved. This video has been prepared for educational purposes only. No part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder.